We're going to do a quick ANCOVA with this video. ANCOVA stands for the analysis of covariance. That's what the C stands for. If you remember back from our two-way factorial ANOVA with the rat smoothies and the wonder drug, where the first IV was the three different drug doses and the second IV was the two different smoothie sizes and the DV was the number of push-ups. We're trying to determine if drug dose and or smoothie size had any kind of effect on the number of push-ups the, rat, the rats could do and we did the regular two-way ANOVA by hand and we have the video series to watch that if you need to get caught up. But here were the results that there was a main effect between the drug doses in the number of push-ups these guys were doing, the rats were doing, but not with the smoothies, okay? And there was an interaction. But now we want to figure out there might have been something else affecting these outcomes. So we are going to look at age of these rats. Age is not yet a variable in this analysis. We did record the age of the, of the rats, but we didn't use it yet. So we're going to label age as our covariate. The analysis of covariance. One of the things that the ANCOVA can do for you is, is it makes your test stronger. So by removing the influence of a variable that you believe could be affecting your outcome, you're going to increase the power of your test and the sensitivity of your test. And in, in this case, it's, a, it's an F test for the ANOVA. And assumptions do apply. All normal ANOVA assumptions must apply to our ANCOVA, such as normality, homogeneity, variance, and independence of observation. Remember, if these assumptions are violated, then you have to do something. Okay, so, but from our other video, we know that our data does fit all these assumptions. So the new assumptions with the ANCOVA, number one, is the covariate has to be measured before you do anything in your experiment. Okay, so, and we did. We recorded these rats at ages before we gave them any smoothies or drugs. Second assumption is the covariate has to be measured without error or as reliably as possible. And uh, in our problem, the covariate is a continuous variable. Just to, just to let you guys know, right? It's just going to be age in weeks, okay? Assumption number three, the covariates are not strongly correlated with one another. We only have one covariate in this study that we're doing now, so we don't have to worry about that one. Number four, there has to be a linear relationship between the DV and the covariate for all of your groups. That's what we call linearity. This is the assumption of linearity for an ANCOVA. And last but not least, that the relationship between the DV and the covariate has to be the same, relatively the same for all groups. That's what we call homogeneity of regression slopes. So we're going to do this step by step. In SPSS. So give me a second. All right, here's our data in the spreadsheet. What we got to go for now is the following the assumptions for a normal ANOVA apply, and we already know that. What are the assumptions of an ANOVA? Homogeneity variance, independence of observation. So we're assuming those, those are okay. But now these are the additional assumptions of an ANCOVA. We did measure the covariate. In other words, we, we have a list of their age in weeks before we started this stuff. And we're assuming that their weeks of age were recorded properly. Covariates cannot correlate strongly with one another. We only have one, so that's not an issue. This is what we're going to do first. We have to check the linearity between the DV and the covariate. So let's go ahead and pull up our... SPSS sheet. One quick thing, I want to double check to make sure that age is relatively normal. We're going to, going to go to Analyze, Descriptives, Frequencies. Make sure age is in the variable box there. Kabam. Statistics I want. Skewness, Kurtosis, blah, 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 blah. Continue. 
chart. I want a histogram. Click OK. And standard deviation is 6. The mean is 23. That seems to be OK. Skewness is very small. So it looks to me like it's going to be a little bit different, but nothing, you know, no deal breakers or anything. And there is the age. Looks relatively normal to me. So we're going to go ahead and proceed. All right, we're going to check between linearity between the DV and the covariate. First thing we got to do is probably make a scatter plot. All right, we're going to go to graphs, legacy dialogues, all the way down to scatter slash dot. We're going to pick the simple scatter plot. Now we have to tell the computer what is being compared to what. Our Y axis is always our DV, that's push ups. Our x-axis in this problem is our covariate, and that's age. The set markers by is, is one of your IVs that breaks them up into groups. So we're going to have to do two separate ones for each of the IV. But let's go ahead and do the strength serum size first. Click the OK button. Cross your fingers. And there's our scatter plot. Okay, so we need to check the correlation. There's several ways to do that. The fastest way that I can see is just double click on this. It pulls up what they call the chart editor. You're going to go up to this little icon. It's going to put a fit line in there for you. And that's going to give us the R squared. So that's pretty big, right? 0.769. Okay, so just click anywhere outside of this box and it'll install it for you. So there's the strength drug, drug serum. Strength drug serum. So now let's do the next one. And that's going to be our smoothie size. We should probably get the same answer, but let's just double check. We're going to go back to graphs, legacy, scatter. We're going to be simple about this. We're going to define it. We're going to take out the strength serum. We're going to put in the smoothie size. We're going to click OK. And we should get a new chart. And here it is down here, smoothie size. Okay, here's the scatter plot for the smoothie size. Not exactly 100% identical, but uh, pretty darn close. So let's just double click on this guy. Same thing. It opens up the chart editor. We're going to put a best fit line in there. And yeah, we get the exact same number. So that tells me that both of these IVs, the smoothie size and the strength serum drug, that the correlation between the DV and the covariate is pretty much the same on each one of them. So that means we're good to go. Now we're going to go ahead and test the last assumption of the ANCOVA. That's the homogeneity of the regression of the slopes. So what that's going to do is compare this regression slope between age and push-ups. That's the DV and the covariate when using the, the drug dosage results. And they're going to compare that regression line to this regression line which is the same thing. It's the relationship between the push-ups and the age of the, of the rats, but only using the smoothie size data. Okay, so that's what this is going to do. So here we go. We're going to go to, let me bring this down, analyze general linear model univariate. Same rules apply here. Our push-ups are the DV, our fixed factors are our IVs, and they're both categorical, right? Smoothie size and strength of serum, and our age is our covariate. Next thing, we're going to click our model. We want, we want C for custom, C for covariate, C for controlled variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to click each of the Variables in there. There's the two IVs. There's the covariate. Now we need to make an interaction for each of the covariate with one IV. So one at a time. How you do that is you click your covariate and then hold down the shift key. So they're both highlighted. Click them over. So there's one. And in there, let's do age with the drug amount. Boom. So those are our interaction sides here. I'm going to click continue. And let's check option boxes. We usually get the means. 
So these are going to be the means controlling for age, okay? So our, our data is going to be a little bit different, but we're going to see if age is indeed a factor when it comes to push-ups. So we're going to click descriptive, estimates of effect size, homogeneity. Those are the only ones that I pick. Click continue, click OK, and here we go. So the only ones we're looking at on this output for the homogeneity of regression slopes is the interaction term between the covariate and each individual IV. So there's the first IV, smoothie size, interacting with age, significance, no, it's close, but no cigar. If this was less than 0.05, that means we would have violated the rule of homogeneity of regression. So now let's check the other one. Drug dose and age, no, that is no way near significance. So now we have cleared all the assumptions. So we're going to go ahead and do our ANCOVA. We're ready for the actual ANCOVA. You're going to go to Analyze, General, Linear Model, Univ <coughs> Univariate. Our DV is the number of push-ups. Our fixed factors are our IVs. We're going to put both the serum strength and the smoothie size in there. And our covariate is age. Okay. Then we're going to go to model. We want to make sure full factorial is clicked. I'm going to click continue. And options. I'm going to go ahead and put all three plus the interaction into the box so we can look at their means and standard deviation, their effect size, power, homogeneity, click continue, click continue, click OK, you're going to keep your fingers crossed. Now comes the fun part, we have to interpret this. Up first, it tells you, it breaks down the different groups for each IV and what, how much of the drug they got or whether they got a small or large smoothie and how many are, are in each group. There's your means and standard deviation of each group and subgroup. Here's our Levine's test. We did not violate the homogeneity of variance assumption because the significance is greater than 0.05. And here's your money right here. The test of between subjects effects box. Let's go ahead and interpret this. So according to this, age, there was a significant difference between the groups because of age. That's what the first one says. Drug dose, that's our IV, our first IV, significance is less than 0.05. So yes, the drug dose had a significant effect on how many push-ups these guys did. And smoothie size, barely, right? This, just, this is right next door to 0.05. So we're going to go ahead and say, yes, if you, if you control for age, then smoothie size is significantly effective on the number of push-ups these guys do, okay? So let's look at effect size real quick. I'm going to have to move this across the screen. But the partial at a squared are commonly called the effect size. We're going to look at this. And age, the partial at a squared for age is 0.247. So what that means is that roughly 25% of the variance in the number of push-ups can be explained by age. But the drug dose size, that, that's your main player here. So in other words, 75% of the variance in the number of push-ups can be attributed to which strength of the drug they got, right? The 0, 10, or 20 milligrams. And then finally, the, about 13% about of the variance can be explained by whether they got the large smoothie size or the small smoothie size. So that's about the, it for that one. And then the estimated marginal means, it basically states what, what the uh, between subjects effects were. We know that there's a significant difference between the serum strengths, right? There it is right there. The means, 12.5, 8.2, 12 12.2. Okay, there's an, a significant difference there. There's a significant difference here between the small and large smoothie size because of the covariate, okay? And there's the overall grouping, the zero milligrams, small, large. There's their means. You can see that. And finally, here's a, a profile plot or the, the means, the marginal means graphing. And you, we can see right there that there's, a, there's definitely an interaction. So I hope that helped. MGZ out.